once again, welcome back to the flat. Good morning everybody, once again welcome back to the plot. Well it's an absolute corker of a morning, I thought I'd get up nice and early this morning because uh, lo and behold we are focused for some rain the night, thunder showers to break out over most of the country, so I thought well crack on and get up here the night and get there, uh, get up here first thing in the morning, make sure all the watering's done and of course these are the, uh, these are the Virginia back here, <laughs> they're just uh, romping away, it's like uh, the tropics in here. It's just, this is where the net's on, this is the big tunnel here and of course where uh, the tomatoes are romping away and all I've got loads on at the top end, we've got uh, some lovely cues on lovely cucumbers and uh, I'll show you as we work up the plot so I'm going to do a quickie video uh, this week, I'm not going to be on too long uh, do a few little bits and pieces that I promised show you the garlic, we've taken all the garlic up now uh, what I did through the week, I took my, uh, my elephant garlic up not as big as what I like to, but uh, it's still nice. And then, of course, I'll give you a few tips on the garlic because there's a lot of people been suffering. Um, what I did do through the week, I got started on the grapevine. Uh, now, I started thinning out. Now, a lot of people have been asking questions about uh, how to do the vine. It's such an easy job to do. Um, with the runners, your, your side shoots, you'll see, you find the shade side shoots come right out. I'll show you better on this side because I haven't finished off the side yet. Um, the side shoots will grow right out. And of course, at the end of the grapes, what I like to do here, once you get your bunch, and then leave one leaf past the grapevine, which you can see there, past a bunch of leaves, let's say, leave one leaf on, and then cut it off. And then that's, that bunch here is absolutely perfect. Now this vine is not finished by a long choke. What I like to do is I get most of the side shoots cut off that I want, and most of the grapes, I must have pulled a bag for out here last week, uh, there was that many on, but I'm not finished here yet because what I like to do is I like to leave them for a week or two, uh, let them fatten out, and then decide on which bunch, which bunches they keep. Because if you can see here, I've got one, two, three. I'll probably take that bunch out, and maybe just take that little bunch out there. So I've one, two, three. Plenty of space in between the bunches. You don't leave a lot of grapes on because this vine's only three year old. This is its third year, so I'm not going to stress it out by growing too many. As you come to the far end of the, the cane here where it's grown, these little bunches, I've just left these on, I'll probably end up cutting these off. Uh, as you can see there's little premature bunches here, I'll probably end up cutting them ones off and then starting from here. That's a fine bunch here, I'll probably I'll probably use that as my, um, as my main one. Now as I say, you can see there perfectly, um, when you go past the vine, when you go past the bunch, up to the first set of leaves and then cut it off. You can see the leaves there still on the end eh? And what you what you do is when you when your bunch is ready to take off, you cut from the back end there and that leaves you a little handle. You can carry a bunch of grapes without having to damage them. Yeah, that's just a little tip there. But there, uh, as I say, I'm working way through them. I'll probably leave these for another week before I thin down again. I'll probably do the video on it next week when I'm starting to thin them out. And then uh, what we'll do, we'll save the bunches. I'm nowhere near ready to get around the back here and start thinning these down. There's all the side shoots growing there, perfectly. Um, in fact, I'm sure you just even one bunch. Yeah, there's a nice bunch there. Now I'll, I'll thin these right down. There's two bunches on there. I'll take one of them off and leave one on. And then there's a, there's a side shoot growing away there. That's it, the runner. And what I'll do is I'll, from that leaf there, I'll cut, cut that off. So it stops that growing altogether. Um, as you can see by these but these these runners here, if I can get under here, they're absolutely massive. Um, bunch of grapes under there. So it's a fantastic uh, black vine. This it really is productive considering uh, it's only two year old. But um, anyway, that's that. Uh, what I'll do next week, I'll probably start the video off and we'll, we'll start cutting back some of the bunches, and then a week after that, I'll start I'll like to start thinning the bunches out. Let's go around with a little pair of scissors and just cutting any premature grapes off. That's in between the bunches. Yeah, like I said, up there, that's a nice bunch here, but you've got a little premature bunch on that side there. Uh, they'll be cut off and just leave that one just leave that one main bunch. Yeah, it's an easy job to do. It's a satisfying job if you just take your time. 
Um, you can go little bits and pieces every other day, you know. Be doing it there. Like I started a Sunday and it was baking hot in here Sunday, so I, uh, I only got a half an hour done before having to escape outside and uh, get myself hosed down to cool off a bit. But um, anyway, that's that. The melons are in. We'll plant the melons uh, last week. They uh, finished off. Yeah, in the grow bags now, and of course uh, the long joe chilies are in the pots now. So the melon house is uh, well full, well chuffed with that. It's merge all the way. I've been planting courgettes in the big tubs. This is where I had my garlics. I had, tw if you remember, I had twelve pots, in the ring culture pots, and I had twelve of them. But I only had nine in here. But I had a couple elsewhere for the elephant garlic. Well, the elephant garlic, as I say, it wasn't. Uh, it didn't come out as uh, as well as as what I'd hoped, but uh, no doubt we'll uh, we'll get in, and we'll. Uh, I'll show you how to get on with that. Here's the last of our, our peaches here, still growing away. It's, it's been absolutely fantastic. The, the wife was tucking in the other day, then the juice was just dribbling down. <laughs> really nice that day. Well, pleased with them. And of course, this is only the second day it's fruited, but our fruit our fruit trees are doing really well. The apples, the pears, they just uh, they just romped away. And of course, uh, what I intend to do this week is to get stuck into our pathways, because the uh, pathways have never had a really good clean for three years. Um, it's just uh, it's one of them jobs that we've never been, never been able to get done. Roger doing all the heavy work for the last couple of years with me being on the mend. Um, but uh, yeah, we're doing really well. We're, we're, all our potlicks are planted out, our cabbages are planted out, our sprouts are planted out. Over here, we've got our, our beans, our runner beans, our uh, French beans. They're starting to climb the canes now, so I'm, uh, I'm chuffed with them. Our main crop potatoes. And of course up here we've got my jack onions which I'm going to do in a couple of minutes but there uh, we've still got bits and pieces lying around the benches uh, just one of the top greenhouses here as you see we always like to put there uh, put a few flowers in and the tracks are uh, the tracks are bugs and there's what rare uh, there's what cucumbers and this, this one's Socrates uh, you always get a, a nice crop from from these a nice early crop so we'll uh, we we'll look forward to having a, a few of them on our salad. Whew, okay, so the strawberries are, I'm going to do the strawberries next week, so it's going to be a, it looks like it's going to be a fruit video for next week. Uh, I've got, I was going to start taking runners this week, but they're looking a bit dry at the moment. I'm just going to leave them because there's lo and behold, we're focused for some, uh, some heavy rains tonight. Uh, the pear tree is absolutely marvellous, it's full again. And of course, the June drop has just been shedding a few of that we don't want. We we'll always get a fantastic crop off that. And of course, the apple tree this year is uh, it's, uh, putting a, a good show. There's uh, quite a lot of fruit on there, so I'm hoping to uh, hoping get a nice crop off that. Okay, so I've had a quick look around the garden here, so we'll get cutting on these onions and the garlic. Okay, right, back inside here. Uh, a couple of the large cucumbers, the telegraph. Uh, just behind we're here. Absolutely marvellous plants. Cracking, grown away really strong. And of course quite a few tomatoes in here. Uh, in the big greenhouse, you see the peppers, the bell peppers on the benches there, growing re really well. Now what I'll do next week, um, because uh, they're starting to put the fruits on, on here. So what I want to do next week is to start a spring programme and of course Nothing better than your Epsom salts, and that's what these will be needing soon. And I'll follow up the spray every, sometimes weekly, sometimes mostly fortnightly, every fortnightly. Give them a really good watering, a good feeding. They don't need so much feed at the moment because, as I keep saying, this is my own mix in these pots. Now these have had nothing whatsoever. Just the what's in the pot are feeding the plants, and as you can see, they're really strong. Just weeding out every now and again. A really strong little growth. They've been they've been there and stopped at the top, been nipped out, and they're just the right height for what I want for on this bench here. If you let them grow on, they'll grow on and grow on and grow on before they actually break. But by then you've got a two or three foot plant. Especially if you're planting in the soil, you can get really tall peppers. And I, I like to stop mine about six leaves up, and that, that way you get a perfect little plant like that. And that's spot on for growing on the bench. But there. As I say, they've had no feed at the moment. When the peppers do start to swell out, we'll start a uh, liquid seaweed feed. 
where um, some of the potash. But uh, before that, we'll start spraying a weekly. Just keep an eye out for the pests, uh, because these are prone for black fly. White fly, love them and all. But uh, as you can see by these are perfect, lovely and clean, nothing on them. Uh, so what we'll do, we'll, we'll, we'll follow up with a spray first off. Um, have some salts, buy a cob of soda, we'll give them a good soaking of that. And then every fortnight after that, we'll give them a good soaking of Epsom salts. Just a nice light spray. You can go on and keep your spray handy. And you can just give them a, keep giving them a... When the peppers, when the fruit starts well and out, they'll, they'll love you for it. They'll benefit really well from that. But uh, as I say, the tomatoes here, they're, they're growing really well. I've got some cocos down here. I'm, uh, I'm really pleased with the way they're growing this year. Nice, strong little plants. And they've got, uh, they've got plenty of fruit on at the moment. That's another little job I like to do, is just to go around. I showed you last week with the pace of this. If you've got a big truss on, and you've got uh, your tomatoes are well set, and then you've got tiny little tomatoes at the end of that truss, just cut them off with your scissors, and it, uh, it just means you've got a nice first class truss of four, five, or six tomatoes. Snip the end off, because nine times out of ten you end up getting little suckers growing at the ends, with your infertile tomatoes. Cut them off with the scissors, doesn't do them any harm that way. You get a uh, excuse me that way you get a first class punch right garlics bring them in show you that's uh, that's one bunch done all cleaned down nicely trimmed oh these are the small these are the small isle of white garlic absolutely first class we'll grow these most years and feel them cloves are absolutely rock hard solid I was loads of lads complaining about the size of that garlic this year. I can only put it down to one thing. I'll hang that one back up. And of course, here's what elephant garlic. It's not as big as what it's been years gone by, but um, I put it down to growing in that big box, the big game, um, the big tub inside the tunnel and I don't think the, the soil was as fertile as it would have liked and I didn't take any readings on the soil so that's probably down to me but look at the cloves on that them cloves on there absolutely humongous cloves oh, uh, the scapes are still on them if you're wondering about the size there's the, there's the garlic scapes and I like to just let them dry off you can cut them off and what you can do with the heads you can uh, you can lightly fry them a lot of people use them but um, they are the rock hard the stems and i just like to leave them as they are they'll be hung up in a couple of days time and uh, first class now as i say there's a load of lads been complaining about the size of that garlic uh, i can only put it down to one thing you're, you're not or you're, or you're planting them too far too deep now, when you've got your clove there's a perfect example there that clove there when you've got that clove you, all you want is to, to plant at the same depth as your clove. So if your clove is an inch, you only want to plant at two inches. That's all. No no deeper than that. And that's what I think happened to a lot of you lads that's been planting your garlics and you're only getting a small bulb. What's happening is you're planting them far too deep and the frost isn't being able to penetrate that topsoil deep enough to get your cloves because your cloves need a really good frosting. Otherwise, your bulb won't segregate and it won't split and uh, you'll end up with a small garlic and that, I think that's what's happening to a lot of you is you're planting them far too deep but once again um, September perfect time right up until November you can plant out I like to try and get mine out as soon as the taties out if the taties come out in September I like to try and get a few garlics in then or the Jap onions whatever's following but uh, we'll go up and we'll show you the Jap onions because they're coming up now end of June well we're into July now it's the 2nd of July the day um, so they got, the Japs need to come out and it's going to leave us a, a little bit of space where I can either put some more cabbage in or I can put a couple of rows of turnip in. It's turned up fantastic time to sow them now. Even a couple of rows of beetroot. I've got some beetroot I sowed over there the other week. They're through now because I had that, that rainfall uh, last weekend. But we've had no rain since so I think this afternoon's going to be a, a really welcome sight to get it, even if we get a thunderstorm. Good downpour, give the garden a really good soaking and you'll be surprised how green it'll turn out. But uh, anyway, that's the um, that's the garlic over. But just um, just bear in mind when you're planting this year's, just make sure you get your garlic at your correct depth. Do not plant too deeply. If you plant too deep, 
you not let your frost penetrate that soil level. Yeah, I've known some people planting three and four inches deep. That's far too deep. That's far too deep. Your frost's not going to get out your bulbs, and they're not going to segregate, and they're not going to grow into a decent sized garlic. I'll move them over them. I'll probably keep one. If I get about 12 cloves off that one there, I'll keep, probably keep the big one. Probably get about 12 cloves off there, and that's my stock for next year. Well, I'll set them away in September. Uh, if you're growing inside, and you're growing in pots, it's easy enough to do. Plant your pot, put your pots outside first. Um, I would leave them a little bit later than September if you're gonna if you're gonna bring them inside. So what I like to do is plant them in October, and by then, but you've, it's still warm enough then in October for your for your garlic clove to set away. Um, wait until that pot's full of root, and it's had a really good frosting outside. I let it sit all all through December, November, December. And then to January, and then when I start planting the early taties in the tunnel, you can bring your garlics in and you've had a really good frosting, and then you can plant them alongside, you can put a row inside your tunnel. That way you know the combs have had a really good frosting and they, they will segregate. And that's it. That's the secret of growing them indoors. But uh, we'll take you all through that in September when we're, uh, we'll plant a few of these beauties. Okay, so let's get out there now and we'll have a look at these Jap onions before I knock off today. Okay, right, well... Absolutely first class out here, as I say. This has been a, the Jap onion bed. Um, we've had this in since uh, October, September. Once again, September, October. Plenty of time. Once again, I never plant my Jap onions too deep. Bulbs, they just press gently in the soil. I know you might have a bit problem with the birds not picking them out, or they, they might pop out itself when they start growing their root and they tend to push itself up. But that's at least the uh, worries that just go along the rows, push back in. One of the, the main things about Jap onions that people lose them is that they don't water them. I know you may think it's crazy watering onions in the winter, but it's not really. You can get really dry spells in the winter. We had a really dry spring here up in the northeast, March, and in April we went for weeks without rain. And of course, if you let these go without water, then the first thing they're gonna do is they're gonna, they're gonna pop, they're gonna go to seed. So even in the middle of winter, when it's been really dry winds and dry, I go along with the, the hose or the watering can and just make sure they've got some moisture at the roots and that's the secret of growing some really good Jap onions and of course nothing better yeah pop it the rubbish, nothing better and just being able to have a nice dry day to skin them. What I normally do, I'm just uh, doing this for the camera, what I normally do is I lift them, I lift a full row, one one row, and let them lie in the soil. But as I said today, I'll focus for some rain. So what I don't want to do is to uh, leave them lying outside here. Absolutely first class. You just uh, brush up its soil off. Let's have a nice bucket ready for you. Be a rubbish because all this goes straight into the compost bin, nothing's wasted. That's a root off. That's soil away. As I say, they're just sitting, they're just sitting on top of the, um, they're just sitting on top of the soil there. And that's, uh, as I say, they're not, never planted too deep. Pull them old skins away. And there we have it. Five minutes work. And absolutely three beauties. Absolutely first class. I'm over the moon with them. Great stuff. That's the Jap onions. I've got a row of reds down there. And I've got a row of whites at the bottom of the snowball. I grew them in the bottom tunnel last year. Yeah, but they were a little bit poor, they didn't grow as well as what they have done, but they've, uh, they've grown really well over there, so I think um, Snowball's going to be on the list again for this year. So I've got the Snowball, I've got the Red Electric, which are going really well, there's some nice bulbs over there, and of course I've got the old time favourites, Sensu Yellow. I never, never fail to grow these babies every year, and I'll always get a first class crop out of them. So my tip, get your onions. If, you're, if your japs are still in the ground, 
pull them out, lie them on the, on the ground. If you're out the garden for a few hours, lie them on the top of your bed for a few hours in the sunshine, if, you, if you're lucky enough to have any. Uh, let them dry out a little bit and then take them inside. You want to take them inside your polytunnel, your greenhouse, your sh even your shed. Take them in, rinse them nice and dry. Then you can sit there in your chair, put the radio on, make yourself a cup of tea or a can of beer, and just gently peel them off, peel them top skins off, and you'll end up with some first class onions they got. And of course, all you have to do then is get a bit of string. Uh, I used to use two foot of string, fold it over, do a quick knot, so you've got a double length, tie it around there, put it through the loop, and you've got a hanging, uh, hanging string straight away. And they'll go straight in the shed. They'll hang in the, hang in the shed now for the next four or five months. And of course, we'll be using a lot of them now because they're uh, out of onions there uh, that we used last year. So uh, that's the, uh, that's my tap. That's my tip for the jack onions. Um, so I'm going to pull this rope, leave it lying for a couple of hours, and of course I can always pop back up this afternoon if it does start raining. I'll open the shed door and walk them straight and say this shed there. Out the rain. I hope it does rain because uh, the garden's bone dry. We really need it. I know we've been going on with the watering can. We've got plenty of tubs of water up here. Um, we've been going on with the watering can doing bits and pieces, but uh, it's not the same as when it's rained. You know, you get that nice fresh rain. And it's, uh, it does a plant a world of good. Okay, so I'm going to plot on here. Uh, in between the jobs, I forgot to mention, we've got, uh, we've got two rows of, of autumn carrots and uh, they're looking really well. And of course, I always plant a couple rows of carrots in between them and uh, keep the cut root fly away. Of course, they smell onions, and I think, well, it's onions, pst, and just fly over. It's just a little trick, organic, and it's a uh, companion planting. No chemicals whatsoever. Don't use any sprays or anything. It's the same in the greenhouses. Don't use any chemicals. You can get by quite easily with just using your, your loaf and putting a few uh, soapy liquid, organic sprays together. Um, Better rhubarb over there. I'll be taking a few rhubarb leaves just in case I get anything crop up on the beans, especially the beans if you get black fly in them. Get a bit of rhubarb, boil it down, a bit soapy water with it, and uh, first class spray for them. Keep them bugs at bay. Uh, fortunately, we haven't had to use any sprays uh, this last couple of weeks, but um, I never set me laurels. I'm always ready, always get a spray ready, and uh, as I say, next week we'll start off a spraying program with the peppers, the chilies and uh, they'll get a regular spray of um, Epsom salts. But uh, apart from that, everything's uh, growing really well. Hope you're enjoying yourselves on your plot. I hope I'll give you a few tips. Uh, I'll hope to make the programme a little bit longer next week. If I get some, uh, get plenty of time, we'll get in there, we'll get that flipping grapevine sorted out once and for all. Pull it right back and uh, I'll show you the extent of um, if the amount of harvest you can expect a crop for young grapevine. Absolutely marvellous, great for growing. And of course we'll get started on the strawberries. I hope we'll start taking a few runners, they're looking a bit dry, but I'm just as I say I'm just leaving them a day. I would normally water them, but uh, if the clouds building up there now, it's starting to bubble up, so if we'll get that rain the day, that'd be great. So I'm going to knock off, I'll get this online the night. Um as I say, keep on enjoying your plots. Hope we'll give you a few tips to get by on. Um if you cannot wait for the video, you can get on my Facebook page. I haven't been on there as much um the last couple of weeks. I've had a few yeah, problems with the misses, but uh, hopefully we're gonna we're gonna see the um, the end of it in the next week or two, and uh, get her back on her feet, and we'll uh, we'll start doing some uh, some decent videos. But for the time being, as I say, um, catch you on our Facebook page. It's Jeff Holman on the plot, and uh, send more friends request, and we'll we'll get you signed up. But until then, cheers for now, and I'll uh, I'll catch you all again next week. Okay, bye for now.